Hello, you're live with Tim Black. Who is this? Yes, hello. Hey, how you doing? Where you calling from? Hey, what's good, man? My name is Yemi Bell. I'm calling from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn, New York in the house. My first New York call tonight. It's cold, it's cold. Hey, it's man, cold, man, I'm um, good. I'm just going to I'm going to wait, man. The, the, the GOP, they're there in this phase. Those motherfuckers are clown, clown cars. I mean, it was a disaster. It was a train wreck. Call me for the leader. She ended. She don't know what the fuck she's doing. She ran HP into the ground. Ben Carson doesn't believe in evolution and is a doctor. What the fuck? <laughs> Rand Paul fraud. Uh, Mike Huckabee fraud. All of them fraud, fraud, fraud. Go down the list, man. They all fraud. God damn, man. <laughs> that, 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 that's the truth, man. Not one of them mentioned any kind of economic policy that could really turn this country around. Not one of them mentioned, you know, black people. Not one of them mentioned, you know, the what reversing that policy that led to the biggest financial crisis in this nation's history. Not one of them mentioned that. Not one of them is for reinstating glass people. And if you don't know what that is, I suggest your viewers to look up what that is. I know what it is. It's ridiculous. They're not going to move it. Right, right. It's what allowed those banks, those banks to the commercial banks to meld with the uh, financial. Uh, in the yeah, they it, it limited it. Glass Steagall Act gave it restricted banks from who they could partner up with. So now what happens is the banks are able to go from the ones that trade like stocks and bonds can now intermingle with commercial banking, which creates those huge banks that are too big to fail. But they did bring it up briefly. They kind of brought it up, bro, when. They were talking about putting people in jail, which is all a hypothetical. I mean, you get a lot of applause for saying that shit, but the reality is they're not going to be locking anybody up. Christie sounded good saying it, but it's not like he can actually do that. So, yeah, they uh, talked they about it. The Christie could do is go to their uh, Christie Queen and he can do That's the best thing he could do. Because let me tell you, you know, Christie's full of shit. His own state hates him. He has an incredible disapproval rating. You know, uh, Kasich, another, you know, he's born. No one cares about Kasich. I mean, they're jokes. Trump is a joke. You know, he, he likes to dodge the fact that he his companies were went into bankruptcy. He likes, you know, play and twist out, twist around the world. And I want to go back to when something one of your callers went. Um, the one of your callers said earlier, they said something about uh, Ben Carson that, you know, people don't like Ben Carson because he's a black conservative. No, people don't like Ben Carson because he's an idiot that denies evolution. He's really about the lies fact. It's not because he's white. It's because he's saying dumb shit. That's really what it comes down to. He says a lot of dumb shit and gets in trouble for it. And he doesn't own up to the shit he said. So, I mean, you know, I'm not going to, you know, hold you up. But the GOP, is, is a, it's a disgrace. They, they don't understand that, you know, pandering, you know, they're all corporate whores. And they don't understand that pandering to the billionaire class, as they've been doing constantly the entire, you know, 35 years of conservative politics has gotten us into this mess, and if we vote a Republican in, with a majority in the Senate, in the House, you're going to get a theocracy, and I don't want to live like when I ran. Wow. So, you know, wow. Bernie, Bernie Sanders, man, Bernie Sanders, that's it, 2016 Bernie Sanders, that's uh -huh. what I'm going for. I heard you, man. I need you to come subscribe to my channel. I need your voice. Um, I agree with some of the points you made. I do think it was a lot of political posturing. A lot of it was bullshit that was said tonight. And uh, yeah, some people, they, they really need to take a step back. Do some fact checking on some of these comments that are made by these politicians. Um, I think people are attracted to Trump because they see him as an outsider, but he is an insider. As my friend Joy would say, he was an insider in the corporate world. So that is inside the game. Let me go and see if this person is now back to the phone. Hey, how you doing? You're live with Tim Black. Who is this? Well, I'm going to have to let that go. Hello, you're live with Hello? Tim. Hey, you're live with Tim Black. Who's this? Hey, this is uh, Tom from Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, Chicago, man. What did you think of the GOP debate? Was there something that struck a chord with you? What's going on? You know, um, I... I'm not a Republican. Uh, I'm not really Democrat either. I'm, I'm more independent. Okay. Uh, I I must say though that the Republican debate is and was a lot more entertaining than the previous Democratic debate. Uh, my, my my one uh, I, one thing about Donald Trump here. I, I'm, not, I'm not his biggest supporter, but uh, he did. I did enjoy watching him today. I also enjoyed Marco Rubio a lot. I thought he did a great job. 
But I think there's a point where Donald was talking about um, the, the bankruptcy. And I, I think, did you catch it? He, did he basically suggest that America should bankrupt ourselves to prosperity? I don't know if you, <laughs> if you, if you understood that the same way I did. So I was curious to see if you, if you got that from that. Man, you know what? I think I missed a couple pieces, little pieces here and there. When I came in, he was talking about, he was doing an explanation of how uh, he said he filed. He didn't file bankruptcy, but his companies did. People took money, so I missed that part. Did he? I, I missed that part. I'm thinking that you're referring to specifically. Hold on a second. Now I remember what it was, but my friend, it was. He said that he used the laws. He used the laws of the land to get ahead. That's what he said he did. And I thought that did sound very. Right. That sounded very tricky. I don't know why no one else has brought that up. That sounded very. I don't know. Sleazy, scumbuckety to me. You know, that he would right, say that right, and I that agree. people oh, people overlook it as if, well, hell, man, that's what you should do. No, it's not really what you should do. He gamed the system. Right. So, yeah, so, I mean, so that, was, that was the thing I, I just want to say I appreciate, just like everyone else is, has been saying, it's going to echo it. I appreciate you streaming it because it's kind of ridiculous that we're not we're not able to see this this debate when it impacts our lives so much and so right. i just want to say thank you for for having that and thank no you for the show and i definitely subscribe and i'll be coming around uh, a few more times here and there hey man that's i appreciate you man for uh i appreciate you for being here man i appreciate you for uh subscribing to the channel and like i said man i didn't even you know what when i started streaming i had no idea i wasn't even thinking about where it was coming from. I just thought everybody should be able to see it. And my people, we, we talk about stuff. This is what we do. So, hey. Uh, hey, I'm Tim Black. You're live. Who's this? Josh. Hey, Josh. How you doing, man? I'm great. I'm calling from Nebraska. Nebraska. My first Nebraska caller of the night. Nebraska. Damn, yes, that's, sir. that Damn. sounds cold, bro. Is it cold there already? You know, I was in the 40s today, so I'm not liking it. It's going to get cold here soon. Nebraska, though, not Alaska. I would like to make that decision. <laughs> Nebraska, not Alaska. I hear you, man. So what is it about? Yeah, so, go ahead. Go ahead. It sounds like you're ready to go. What I want to talk to you about, and actually people have already been talking to you about, is the fact that this debate was not live streamed. And I'm a cord cutter. Like, I'm a young independent in a very red state and you know what like i wanted to watch this but this is not available to me and not available to a lot of other voters and you provided the service which i appreciate because i would like to let you know that i work in the media and i appreciate that you provided the service because i think that the debate provides that have to partner with social media to provide this to voters this should be available to everyone I agree with you 100%, man. I agree 100%. And that's really what I just wanted to say. You know, that's what I have to tell you. Thank you. Not a problem. Because I'm in the media, the media, you know. Right. And I couldn't get access to this. So I appreciate it. I appreciate you for calling in, man, and letting people know how you feel about it. Um, I am I am pissed off that they didn't show it to everyone. And like I said, man, I had no idea that they were restricting viewership. We every debate we stream on my channel and we talk about it. We do it as a group. People like to share reactions. They like to type and chat while it's going on. So, actually, man, it, it wasn't really it, a and it wasn't a big strategy on my part. I just do it because this I is know, what we do. Check, check this out, though. The, the, most of the other debates have not been streamed either. This is a rarity. Wow, wow, that's good to know. Well, I will be streaming the next one and all the subsequent debates after that. So. Come through. I appreciate that. You got to get the word out on Twitter, and I'll try to help, too. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, you Nebraska. Thank All right, you. Nebraska. Later. We see we got some good people, man. Don't let anybody tell you that we don't have any good people on the Internet. We got some bad apples, but we got some apples that are pretty pretty good for you. Like, that was a good apple right Tim, there. I'm a good apple. Come on, Tim. <laughs> hey, what's going on, my friend? How you doing? Hey. Hey, where you calling from, man? Timmy. Hey, what's up, man? Where you calling from? Oh, gosh. Dallas. Dallas, Dallas. My first Dallas call tonight, man. Hold on. Let me give you some love, man. 
Really? First yeah. one? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, first from Dallas. I had another caller from Texas, but not Dallas, Texas. Oh, you um, did? Yeah, that's right. I had a teacher from Texas. So, my friend, what stuck out to you tonight, man? What What made you feel good or oh, pissed man. you off? I Whatever. Mean, I'm a huge Trump fan because, not on purpose, really, but just because he's just been so even if you don't like the guy, you believe in his, his persona, you know? You're, you're just on, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue with like a, a strong, a strong person like that, even if they're wrong or right. I mean, they're strong. It's like, a, it's like Putin. Putin is a strong <laughs> leader. I mean, there's no one who will deny that. So Trump, I see, is like kind of the same, you know? You agree or disagree? I think you got a point there. I think you, I think you've uncovered the strength in his why he's rising so fast. Why people buy in because you feel like he buys in. You feel like he believes in yeah, what he's yeah, saying. He does. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Good point. So you think he won the so, debate? I mean, he had a pretty good debate. You think he did? Uh, okay. Yeah, he did pretty good. He. I mean, it's hard for him to do bad though. He's just continuing the same thing he's always said. I mean, he's right. he's solid. Right. Uh, I, I still kind of shocked about the Carson. I always think because, and it's just, I mean, you hear Carson talk and he has like a really soft voice. Like he hasn't ended his sentences strongly. He has like a very, okay, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, right. kind of, it's just not what I expected to hear from him. And I didn't actually hear him until recently. Right. Like uh, the last of it actually. But to me, it's like if he had a stronger voice, I'd actually probably be for him, to be honest. Right, right. That's what a lot of people and say, it's just man. Kind of a local thing. Right. That's what a lot of people say, man. He's too sheepish. Uh, someone called him Bambi. Yeah, that, that's not good. Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he and he also has like some kind of strange. I mean, he's, he's the Seventh Day Adventist. He has some kind of strange ideas. He's very religious. He doesn't quite jive with the theory of evolution, which is kind of strange to me as well. But if, if but and still, he would be fine probably versus whatever a Democratic candidate. He. Probably get eaten alive by Hillary though, so I wouldn't like <laughs> that. So yeah, I don't think he's going. That's gonna... also another reason for Trump. I think Trump matches up well. All right, man. Well, hey. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I think I, I think I kind of agree with you as far as Trump. I think he did what he needed to do to stay on top. I did not like Huckabee. I did not like Huckabee, but he oh, did. No, not but you know, he made a good point when he when he did the strike back about them trying to pit them against each other. He scored some points. I forgot about that. That that was pretty good on Huckabee. Yeah, he wasn't the only one that said that though. I think I think Cruz brought that up as well, where they kind of the moderators ask questions to pit people against each other and. And that's not really the point. I mean, the point is, you know, who's going to do the best job and what are they, um, they going to do? <laughs> right, right. Well, look, man, thank so, you. I actually don't like Cruz either, but he did good. Yeah, he well, did. He, yeah, he did pretty good. I was, I was kind of uh, Marco Rubio. I think Marco Rubio is plastic. Oh, I don't, be, I don't believe him. He's good at talking, uh, but I don't believe anything that he says out of his mouth. What do you think? I hear you. And I actually have like three hundred and fifty bucks against Rubio right now, <laughs> and I still th oh seriously, it's a bet. But I still think he did really uh, well in the debate. I mean, he right. Jeb tried to hit him a couple times, and he was not taking that shit. I mean, he uh, he did really well. He did one of those. He did one of those right there. He dropped. He he knocked the dirt off his shoulder a couple times. Yeah. So I was pleased, and he had a strong performance as well. Serena. I mean, as far as, like we said, Fernanda, Huckabee, uh, Rand Paul, they're still all kind of wasting their time. Yeah. Um, I agree. Rubio has, like, the best chance as far as roguish, youngish kind of guy. Right. Um, Chris Christie is wasting time. Right, right. I agree. <laughs> I mean, look at the, just look at the poll numbers. I mean, we're talking about Rand Paul. We're talking about Huckabee. These guys have less than a percent, yeah, less than one percent of people. Yeah. How is that even worth my time to listen to what they have to say? In fact, they have literally – Almost a zero percent chance of being elected. I really do not. Yeah, you know, I can't listen to them. <laughs> and it's not that they don't have the right thing to say and that they're wrong, but they will not be elected. <laughs> right, right. Well, look, man, I appreciate you calling me up and giving me your comments. Come on over to the channel, subscribe. I appreciate you taking it, man. Ain't hey, no problem, man. It's a free channel, and we do this every debate. Good, talk, good show, good stream. Appreciate everything you're doing, man. My man, all the way from Texas, man. You gotta love it. Good people, good times, man. Uh, what I would like to say is I would like just piggybacking on what my man just said from Texas. Look, we need to get these people out of the race who are not 
contenders in the race. We need to shorten the field. That way we can get more substantive debates out of these people. When you got how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven people on stage at one time, you get nothing accomplished. Let's get rid of cases. Let's get rid of uh let's get a, get rid of Carly. Carly had a run, but she's done. Let's get rid of Christy. Let's get rid of uh Rand Paul, even though I like Rand Paul on some issues, he's not showing he's not showing improving. Let's and there's a couple others that can go as well. Let's get rid of Jab. Jab, come on, Jab. You've been mailing it in. I don't believe it. All right, let me go to the next person, man. Hey, how you doing? You've been you've been holding for a long time. I appreciate you. You are live. Who is this? Hola. Hey, how you doing? You're live. Hello? Hello, is it me? Yes, it's you. How you doing? I'm sorry you had to hold so long. Oh, it's me. Yes. No, I'm, I'm ready to hold. <clears throat> so, where are you? Ready to hold and comment. <laughs> Fantastic. You're on live now. Where are you calling from, my friend? All right. Yeah. Where are you at? I'm calling from Nashville, Nashville Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. My first Tennessee caller tonight. <laughs> Got to give it up for Tennessee. Now look, lady from Tennessee, I need you to be brutally honest and I want you to tell me what stuck out to you tonight, what resonated the most with you tonight in the debates. I will be brutally honest and tell you what resonated with me in those debates and it was shocking to me because this is the person that I do not want to be president. But Donald Trump stuck out to me in the president oh, in, in, in the debate tonight. His comment about the super PAC and people being bought and sold, that just struck me to the core. I have my man. It's not, it's not a Republican. But I want a good Republican to run, too, because I want to have a good choice between the two. Right, right, right. And, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure that Donald Trump, that person, because I disagree with so many of his other statements, but that one statement struck me. You're right. Real. You're right. That but, was that was yeah. a very strong statement. You're very still strong. Right. Very strong statement. It's still right. I mean, you're bought, you're, you're, people are paying for you. Right. These people are voting. These people are good people, but they're voting for people that they're voting for things because they have been bought. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think more people need to think about and, that. Yeah. And, and and I think that that's great that he's bringing that to the Republican stage because I don't think that people see that as a real problem. And I honestly feel that that is the biggest problem in politics today. Wow. That's an excellent point. You know what? I think we're going to have to talk about that more as, as time goes on, we need to talk about that more on my channel. We do a show every night, so maybe we'll have that discussion later on this week. Money and politics and PACs. And if Trump, Trump's bringing up a good point, I think more people need to think about that. I don't care who you are, Democrat, Republican, or Independent. If someone's paying for your politician, how much can you trust them? How much can you trust them? Exactly. Exactly. Whether, I can't vote for Hillary. Right. Even though I think I might be a, a Democrat, I voted for both in my life, but I cannot vote for her because I know she's bought and paid for. And I know that all of them are bought and paid for, so who's not? Wow. I Who can I vote for that is not bought and paid for? I have no idea. actually don't <laughs> to work for me. Very good points. Very good points. I want to thank you for holding on. Please subscribe to my channel. We do a show every night at 9 p.m. I did. I already did. Well, I was hoping I already did. <laughs> Because I love your perspective. You're bringing up some good points, and we need to talk about that more often. Thank you, Carlin, from Tennessee. Hey, Tennessee. Tennessee. All right, guys, let me go. Let me keep it moving. I still got 11 callers. Let me get through this list. I'm Tim Black. You are live. Thank you for holding on. Who is this? Hello? Hello, Tim. Hey, how you doing, yeah. man? You've been, you've been holding for a long okay. time. I got to get you in here. What? Where are you calling from? You're... Uh, Tim, I'm calling from Paris, France. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, okay, my man, hold on a second. We got to give you a real, a real applause here. 
My man called from Paris, France. Isn't that something? All right, my yeah, friend. You just cost me thirty. I want. I, I want you to know that. I did what now? You just cost me thirty euros, but what's much more important than the thirty euros that you spent on Paul was how important it is to me that you understand that information. To the people, and I cannot thank you enough for streaming the day tonight. Wow, man! Wow, man! Thank you, my friend. Thank, thank you. you. Wow, that's that means uh, a lot. I'm, man. I, I'm originally from Alabama, and I uh, just moved here with my lovely wife, and I'm currently a migrant. And so I'm sitting here and I'm looking at politics, right? Being raised as a, and now imagining my life as an immigrant. And uh, this debate for me resonates like every day before it. It's a really big deal, and I love the fact he brought it to me. I love the fact that I'm awake at 5 a.m. And uh, it's, it's a really big deal. Just thank you for your work. Man, thank thank you for expressing yourself and letting it be known that you appreciate it, man. I appreciate you. Seriously. So uh, what was your take on the debate? Because I, I'm all over the place with it. Man, you know... Um, I was making a statement earlier just before I brought you in, man, that I think that we need to clear the we need to start clearing the field. We need to get people out of the way so we can have more of a real debate so we can really hear what these candidates have to tell us about what they're gonna do if they are elected. So we need to get rid of the dead weight. I say we get rid of Jeb Bush. I know you got a lot of money. I know you I know that your your brothers were very your brother was successful, your dad was successful, but we need to get rid of you. You're in the way. We need to get rid of Carly Fiorina. I think it's time for her to go. She had her moment in the sun, it's over. We need to get rid of Chris Christie. Chris Christie's taking up space, literally. I say we get rid of uh, Huckabee. Huckabee's also taking up space, literally. Let's get rid of these people and let's start narrowing down to the people that actually have a shot so we can actually have conversations and that this person talk for 30 seconds and then jump over here and this person talk for 15 seconds. That shit ain't getting it done, my friend. No, it's absolutely it's a complete gimmick. And I agree with clapping. And one thing that I can't help but think is I remember when I moved from Alabama to Memphis, Tennessee in 2000, uh, I'm sorry, in 1992, and the Gulf War is going on, and I've got Bush number one. And then I remember I graduate from college, and then I get given a president that no one voted for, and uh, all of a sudden we're involved in multiple wars, and I'm dealing with the second phase of the Bushes, but I remember growing up as a teenager and dealing with the Clintons and the scandal there. Right. Now I'm sitting, I'm looking at this next wave of politics as, a, as now no longer a young adult, but a middle-aged adult. Right. Trying to make decisions about who I'm going to be and what I think and what I believe. And I'm looking at Bush and I'm looking at a Clinton. And Bush, I, I couldn't agree with your analysis more over the evening. Bush is a dead weight and all he represents is a double bill son. He doesn't represent a thought, he doesn't anything that's pushing this nation forward. And the issue for me tonight, and we've had previous callers this evening talking about the issue of the fact that this was not a live stream, that people did not have access to this debate. Right. And what bothers me the most is the way they titled it, Your Money, Your Vote. That was the title that uh, the network decided to use. You're right. And they are literally saying that our money exactly coincides, coincides with our vote instead of our civic concept of our loyalty to our nation and the value of what we do to put one foot in front of another. And this information, like your previous caller said, should have been available to every person that could have had access. Right. And yet they title it, your money pays for your vote. And that breaks my heart. That's and I love your analysis throughout the debate. You kept showing the ways that the candidates either dodged issues or they talked about their platforms. And one of my problems with this idea tonight was supposed to be focused on domestic issues, your policy. But policy as a president is one third of our government. We're not talking about legislation. We're not talking about the judicial. We're talking about the executive. But when you talk about what you want to sell it, you're talking about what comes in your happy meal. If you want your 60 seconds or you want your burger, you're still right. just talking about the present you're practicing as the end of our childhood meal. Right, right, right. That meal never gets served because we have a legislative that's dead 
And we have a judicial that overrides the opinion of the majority of the American people constantly. Right. We just gave corporations, we just gave corporations the rights of a human being in 2010. And we just made a unilateral decision about marriage, and, um, a decision that I support, but it wasn't a democratic decision. Hmm. So when we talk about what are your policies, the only thing that I can think when I look at this field is I keep hearing Trump. Because Trump says, you know, what are you going to do about Syria? What are you going to do about this and that? And he says, I'm not going to talk to you about that out loud. One thing that he acknowledges as a negotiator is that this is dynamic. And I, I could tell you one thing right now, but I'm beholden to that when I go into office, and that's not the way the negotiator gets into a deal. Hmm. Because you're cornered. Now you've made a huge promise. You have to live up to something, and you failed. I, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I, I, what I do understand is why Trump is so powerful. What I don't understand is that us as civic citizens have such a disregard for promises about excluding immigration into a country that has never been great, except for the fact that its immigrants have contributed so much to the dream that it promised. And the debate first for me is just in this foot and this left. And, at, you know, from abroad at 5 o'clock in the morning, the fact that you're bringing this to the people that need to hear it, and the fact that I'm still assisting, I'm still holding my Ohio driver's license. And that's true. I, I am Ohio registered driver. Uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I spent a few years of my life in that incredible state, and I watched all the bullshit that was on. And <laughs> percentages, like you said, your point was perfect. And, I mean, he's garbage. I mean, that's just, it's a joke. And I think Trump really called it up with fracking and everything like that. Right. He's talking about numbers. Those numbers are lives, and those numbers are quality of life loss. Right. And the fact that he can just sit there and the bottom line was cleared is a, is a heartbreaker for what that did to the actual people that live in the state of Ohio and the mentality of America's prison court. Well, look, my friend, I want to thank you so much for calling in and spending those euros to, uh, to catch this and be able to share your thoughts, man. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I like the way you think. You you seem like you're, you 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 use logic and reason, and you got some compassion in there as well. And we need more of that on my channel. So I'd love to have you a part of the Wolfpack. No, I appreciate your compassion. I appreciate your uh, your commitment to just bringing information to people. And you have a, at least one more subscriber from here on out. It's fantastic, man. Thank you again. Wow, guys. Wow, okay. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tim Black. You're live. Thanks for holding. Who is on the line? This is Henry Hill, man. Henry Hill, my friend. Sir, where are you calling from, Mr. Hill? I'm calling from Miami. Miami. Miami in the house. You're my first Miami caller. From my, I'm from no. Miami, Miami, Florida. Huh? Miami, Florida. Okay. I'm trying to think. Yeah, the gunshots right now, man. Damn. And hey, you know what? Uh, that subject was missed tonight in uh, tonight's debate. Other than they did talk about gun control briefly, but uh, nothing, uh, they didn't truly get to the issue. What resonated with you tonight, Mr. Hill? Well, I got to tell you how I, got it, how, how I found you, Tim. It's, it's very strange. Okay. I, I'm listening to gunshots. Now, I'm, I got gunshots going over. I got to get inside, man. Damn, bro. But, uh... I, I, I found you, man, I was watching the Fox stream, right? They, they had actually started streaming it on Fox, and I found it. And um, when Trump started talking, remember when he started talking about Lehman Brothers? Okay, yeah, Lehman Brothers, okay. Um, he yeah. started talking about Lehman Brothers, right? And exactly. they cut it off. What? Get out of here. They cut the stream off. Wow, wow. I didn't know that. I had no way of knowing that. Wow. Yeah, that's how important <laughs> you are, my brother. And and what happened was, when they cut the stream off, I had to start looking for other streams. And, you know, they had it on Young Turk, but you know how they are. They had it on uh, InfoWars. I don't want to hear all the uh, sarcasm. And I saw you. I said, well, let me see what this guy is talking about. Boom, bumped on you, and you had you was running, you streaming it straight off, you know, letting us hear it straight up, uncut. Right. We, we could hear the debate. Right. And right. you just don't know how important you are right now, my brother. Wow, man. Throughout the world. 
you had like seven, I don't know if you was watching, but you had like over 7,000 people watching. Someone hit me up, man, Mr. Hill. Somebody hit me up and said uh, on Meerkat on uh, Twitter and said, you got thousands of people watching, restreaming it. And um, yeah. I, I did I did realize it at that point, and I just wanted to make sure. I was like, please don't let this stream go out. People are counting on this feed to stay up, to stay active. You know yeah. what I mean? That was my main concern, bro. But, man, thank you for uh, for just reiterating it, man, because, um, you, you know, you man, do something. God, I was with now, go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Hill. Uh -huh. Go ahead, Mr. Hill. No, I was just going to say, Tim, you, you got another subscriber, man. I'm, I'm be listening to you every night. Uh, <laughs> oh, but uh, God was with you tonight. God was with us tonight wow. to let us hear what, what these people are talking about because we are heading right. for a downfall if we don't, if we're not informed. And this, this, this is the thing that gets me. How are you going to tell us that you want our votes and then you don't fully inform us? That's, that's ridiculous. It, it's ridiculous. And, uh, Tim, you picked up a lot of people tonight, man. Not just from just, uh, uh, just for the, for, for the stream, but for the conversation, man. I, I, I just, I stayed online just to hear what everybody was talking about. Wow. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking about the streets, not, not, the, uh, the, the, the mansions or the, right. the house. I'm talking about the streets, the, the folks that really need to hear this. And uh, 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 pat on the back, uh, Mr. Black. Pat on the back, man. Amen. You got me forever. Hey man, I, Mr. Hill, thank you, bros. You need to be safe, man. Um, we do this every night, and of course, every debate will be streamed. Okay. We have a show every night. We do different topics. It's not always trending news. We do breaking news, but we also do stuff that's just like regular stuff we need to talk about. And we'd love to add you to yeah, the that's what I'm You know what I'm saying? We need to add you to the community, bro. So be there, no man. No doubt, man. We tweeting you forever, man. You you own. You gonna get? You got all my all all the all the ears that I have. You got. It. Hey, man. Well, thank you so much, man. Thank you for holding to tell me that, too, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, man. All right, now. That was Mr. Hill, man, from Miami, man. Let me just get, gather myself for a minute, man. Damn. It's deep. It's deep. You know, um, that's two calls back to back, man. I'm not used to getting that much praise. I just do what I do, man. And when people uh, express themselves like that, it means a lot that uh, you guys appreciate what I do. Um, thank you. All right. Let me go to the next call, man.